In this video, I'm going to go through everything you should be thinking about if you want to become a full-time photographer in 2024. Being a photographer is great. I love it and many, many other people do. And that is a real bummer because that means it's a very competitive area. Anything really fun to do is going to be competitive. It's like being a footballer. Loads of people want to do it. Very few people are going to really make a massive living out of it. No matter what genre of photography you're in, you will have competition. Unless you're some crazy specialist in something absolutely bizarre that no one's ever heard of, but I'm pretty sure we've got everything covered by now. Because of this, it's really hard to get your foot in and really start the ball rolling. I'm going to give you some tips in this video on what to do if you're thinking of becoming a full-time photographer, because there are still jobs out there. My first tip is going to be a real bummer and it kind of contradicts the actual title of this video because if you have a day job, I would recommend keeping that until you can no longer do your day job and photography. If you don't have a day job, you may be in a position where you need to do a few photography jobs that aren't exactly what you want to do. You might have to shoot Uncle Dave's wedding or little Johnny's birthday party just to kind of make that little bit of extra money while you're saving up to really focus in on what you want to do, which is where you're going to start seeing the kind of the big paychecks. I'm in the same boat. I do real estate. I don't advertise it on my website because it's not what I love doing. But sometimes when work is slow, I've always added a little bit of real estate photography in, which is great. It's nice to still be in the photography area. If you don't have a day job and you just want to kind of go straight into photography. There are a few areas which, which are still really saturated, but demand is really high. It can be things like real estate, headshots, events. These can help you get that little bit of extra money while you're slowly building up clients or customers that you want to work with. When you're struggling to do your day job and your part-time photography work, which is your little side hustle because your photography work is building up and you can no longer have the time to do both, before you quit your day job, make sure you have some savings. However much you'll need to kind of stay running for a few months without having to stress too much, this is gonna be different for everybody. So kind of look at your expenses. If you're still living at home, it's gonna be a lot less than if you have a family and a mortgage. But if you've already got enough work that it's interfering with your day-to-day -day job, you shouldn't need to go into these savings because you've already got some customers. Next on the list of things is what kit do you need? If you're right at the beginning of your journey as a photographer and you're just a beginner, you need a camera. If you're watching this video, I'm going to assume you've already maybe got a camera. If you're thinking of becoming a full-time photographer, you probably should already have that camera. Whatever camera you have is good enough. If you are thinking of buying any kit, I would go for second hand. You don't need the new flashy camera. Just because an advert tells you so, it's not true. Don't use those hard-earned savings for new kit unless you really, really need it to do a job that will bring in money. If it's a one-off thing, think about renting it. If you need it and you know you're going to need it, like a particular lens that you really want to use or you don't have a camera, look into second-hand kit. You can use MPB. I'll leave them linked down below, but they're really good. I've had a, bought a couple of things from them and it's always been top up. I can't list all the kit you're going to need because every area of photography is, going, photography is going to be completely different. If you're a wedding photographer, you're probably not going to want the same lenses I use as a food photographer. Cheap lenses that work for most, if not all, genres, a 50mm nifty 50 is a really good starting point. Other than a camera, you're going to maybe want something like a tripod. These aren't going to break the bank and if you're into photography already, you probably have one and whatever you have will be good enough. The next thing on the list, if you do studio work like me, will be lighting. Lighting and modifiers. This is going to stop you relying on natural daylight, which is going to be important if you are shoot, if you are still in a day job because at night you can't use natural light because there is isn't. Now you've got all the kit and you've got a passion to keep going and make this your full-time career, you need to practice, 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 practice. And this is never going to stop. If you're very new, you might not know what niche you want to be in, what genre of photography. Do you want to shoot weddings? Do you want to shoot um, animals? Do you want to shoot food? Maybe try a little of everything and pick which one you really want to concentrate on. Nobody has the time to be a master in every single area. 
you're going to see a lot more improvement if you pick one area and you focus all of your time and energy into that area. Everything is so different that you can't just hop from one thing to another and use the same skills. For example, I do food and drink. I may shoot other things, but what I specialize in is food and drink, and I will do that in my spare time. I don't go around taking people pictures of people's houses in my spare time. Like I said, this is gonna be an ongoing thing. Throughout your whole career, you will always be test shooting, building your portfolio and developing your style. You may not, you probably won't have a style at the beginning. This will develop and change as you, as you develop and change as a photographer. Now we're on to our next step and we have built a solid base portfolio. We've got a bunch of images, maybe 10 to 20 to start with, of great images that we want to show everybody. Although having these on a social media like Instagram is great and I would definitely recommend that, you also want to get them off someone else's so off social media and onto your own website. This is going to give you a lot more of a professional look. Websites are not hard to make anymore and they are kind of cheap as well if you think about it. Compared to your camera, it's a pretty cheap purchase. If you've already got a camera, I would definitely recommend buying your website before another camera. If funds really are tight in your photography business, some platforms like Wix will actually have a free option. You'll have their branding and you won't have a personalized domain name, but it's a good start to maybe get the ball rolling. When you can though, I would definitely recommend purchasing that domain name and purchasing an email to go along with it because this is gonna make you look a lot more professional and brands and other clients are gonna trust you a lot more. I was driving behind a van the other day and it was, I think it was a plumber and it was something at gmail.com and instantly I wouldn't trust him as much as someone that has gone through the effort of actually getting a proper email address. When building your website, just remember to keep it as simple make it super easy to create, it's quicker for you, it gets your images out quicker, and it's quicker and easier for everybody else. I used this example recently, but I love going and shopping at Zara, but I never shop on high streets anymore. But I never have anything from Zara anymore because their website is rubbish. I do not know how to navigate it, and I just never bother going on. The people looking at your website will have these same issues. If you've got really fancy homepage and entry page, and, if it's hard to find your images and your contact information, people will click off. So we've got the passion, we've got the niche, the kit, the website, the great work. We have to market ourselves. You can't just sit there and expect brands and customers to come to you. You have to put your work in front of eyeballs that want to hire you. This is gonna be different for every genre. If you are a wedding photographer, um, or a portrait photographer, paid advertisements on Facebook are probably good because they're full of people getting engaged and people with families. For me as a food and drink photographer, I look up brands, uh, local brands, local advertising agencies, and I send them my portfolio. Learn how marketing works in your genre and this will be the way you market yourself for the rest of your career. Some lucky few will get a lot of clients and they just no longer have any need for advertising, but I am not one of them. I still spend a lot of my time marketing myself. <laughs> the last thing you really need is time and patience. Becoming a photographer is possible, but it is not easy. It takes time and it takes patience. You will be working on your photography from now until you retire and then you'll still probably work on it because photography is just fun and we like doing it in our spare time. You're going to need to build up your skills, your skills in photography and your skills in advertising and marketing yourself. You're basically selling yourself and you will get better at doing this. It could take a lot of time for the outreach and marketing to really pay off and you'll start to see some returns, but it will happen. It takes a hundred no's to get one yes. Every yes you get, you're going to improve more on how you outreach clients and how you photograph because we're doing lots of test shoots. Just remember, if you've got the passion for it, it is definitely possible to be a full-time photographer. Yes, lots of people want to do it, but lots of people need photographers too, especially in the age we're in now where social media is just constantly changing. From my point of view, as a food and drinks photographer, brands need to compete with other brands that are putting out content on social media like reels and nice pretty Instagram pictures every single day. 
the more content being consumed, the more content that needs to be produced. Just remember, if it was easy, everybody would do it. So work hard and you will get there. If you're a new photographer or you're looking at maybe uh, hopefully becoming full time in 2024, then I would love to follow your journey. So either leave your Instagram link down below or follow me at AM Photographer UK. Get in touch with me on that and I will follow your journey into full time photography. Thanks for watching guys. I'm looking forward to creating more videos for you guys this year and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.